What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. So this is day two of the three hour BMW wheel bearing job. Uh, so today's Monday, so this does start our work week for uh, the uh, side job business. Um, I already got a call this morning from Sean. He's our guy with the limo and transit uh, company that picks up people from the airport. He's local, he's got a fleet of about 12 vehicles and I service them for him. So we got a contract started back up with him and he just told me that around 2.30 today is when a car is gonna be back at his lot, needs to get uh, looked at. He's saying the driver said the front end feels like it's gonna fall out of it. It's a Lincoln Town car. So we have until 2.30 to basically get this wheel bearing done on my personal BMW, get this garage tightened up and cleaned up and ready to work out of. And then what I usually do is I'll go to his lot where the car is at. If the car is drivable, I'll park my car. I'll bring that car here because it's so close and then we'll take a look at it here. So it's 9 a.m. right now. Um, we're gonna get cracked on. Basically where we left off was we got this, uh, we got the wheel bearing out of the hub, or we got the hub out of the wheel bearing and we got the original wheel bearing out of the knuckle and we still have part of the uh, bearing stuck on the hub so we're going to uh, put a slit in that with a cut off wheel try not to damage the hub itself use the air hammer air hammer that off um, I don't have like a puller or bearing separator right now that would take that off but the air hammer will work just as good and now that we got that new air compressor we'll be able to use the air hammer so once we got that off we'll clean up the knuckle itself wire brush clean it up nice and good, we'll get the bearing pressed in, we'll get the hub pressed back in, and we'll get that knuckle back onto the car, and then it should be uh, should be golden. So we got plenty of time, um, so let's get cracking. So I did exactly what I said I was going to do. Basically, if you don't have a, uh, a bearing puller or like a separator, like those two jaws that come under and then grab underneath the bearing and pull it up, you grab a cutoff wheel, put a nick in it, usually from the side on a side angle to relieve some of that pressure. And then you get a flat chisel like this right up under it. It just relieves that pressure. And usually you can just bang it right out, so. Preferably you want to have a vise, which is why after we get this job done, we really got to tighten up the garage. Um, because I got the vise over there, it's just... There's too much stuff in the way, so let me show you guys how to uh, pop this off real quick. So I just grabbed the air hammer. It actually has a fickle fork adapt uh, attachment on right now. And you can see I didn't even have to cut all the way through. It does end up nicking the hub. Usually you end up putting something in the hub, but it is what it is. Like I said, this is my personal vehicle. If this was somebody else's, I would have told them to get a new hub. Paid $1,500 for this car, so it's just a matter of getting it back going. So you just relieve some of that pressure, get up under it, pop it right out. You could grab some sandpaper and uh, just make sure, or a file, make sure you got no rough edges so that when you're putting that new, when you're putting this into the new bearing, you don't have any issues, but we should be fine. So we'll grab our, uh, our knuckle and our new bearing and uh, we'll make sure we don't damage our ABS sensor ring on the bearing like I was talking to you guys about this is that magnetic strip on the back very important cannot be damaged and you got to make sure this goes in the right way so let's get that uh, set up and on the press and keep moving along <laughs> So as you guys can see, <clears throat> to 
get the bearing into the hub, I ended up using that front wheel drive uh, press kit. So you can do, you can use that to, to get the bearing in on this, but to get it out and everything, we had to get that H frame. So see, we got the bearing in there. We didn't damage it at all. The most important thing is not damaging the back. That's where your ABS sensor is gonna read on the back of that magnetic ring. And another important thing is getting the bearing fully seated so that that snap ring can go into its groove. So you see it's fully seated. So I'll clean that up. We'll get the snap ring back in. And then the fun part's gonna be getting the hub into the, um, into the bearing without splitting the bearing. Sometimes what happens when you're pressing it in, the bearing wants to split. Um, don't think that's gonna happen in this case because the, the bearing is backed. The back end is backed right here, but this middle part can still split. So what I like to do is put something like a stop, a socket or something there. So it doesn't want to split because it, it will happen to you. Um, trust me, it will. <laughs> I'm speaking from experience. So uh, let's get started with that. Clean the parts up and uh, I'm going to uh, hit, the, hit the hub with a little sandpaper. Like I said, I'm working on this completely different than I would be working on a customer's vehicle um, because it's my own and I paid 1500 bucks for it. And like I said, I've gotten my use out of it, but I just need it up and going and, and ready to rock and roll again. So we're moving along. <laughs> So what you guys just saw me do was um, this snap ring uh, for this bearing on the uh, on the hub or on the knuckle is really big, and this is my biggest pair of snap ring pliers uh, that that go both ways. I have the icons; these would work perfect if uh, they went the other way. These only expand. I needed it to pull them together. So an old trick is you uh, you put it in sideways. You know, you get this one end started in there and you bang down with a hammer and you just get it seated into the groove right there and you just work your way around with a hammer and just bang it into place. And then uh, once you get towards the end, it just snaps right in if you don't have the snap ring pliers. Um, but to get it out, you kind of really need the snap ring pliers. Sometimes you get away with a flat head or a pick, get it behind there and get it, get a flat head in there and work it out with a flat head. But this is why you need the right tool for the job. Snap on, uh, this came with like a five piece set, I believe, the snap ring set. This is a snap on one, but they do have a bigger step up from both of these sizes, and that would have been the one that I needed. It would have worked perfect, but uh, this one just wasn't big enough. I was able to take it out because I was able to apply enough downward pressure so it wouldn't slip off of the uh, snap ring. But to put it back in, I mean, I'm not playing games today. I don't really have time to play games. So just a quick tip for uh, install. So now we're going to get this hub pressed back in. I'm going to see if I can use the, uh, the front wheel drive uh, press to press it in. I don't know. If not, we'll have to use the H frame. Um, I just hate using these, you know, these Arbor block plates or, or whatever they're called. They're just a pain in the neck. You got to get aftermarket ones um, or a better way or really make your own stuff. I got some sheets of steel over there. I might make a few adapters to uh, mount things to this. But for right now, we're working on what we got. So we'll get this, uh, get this on here and that's it. We'll put it back on the car and then we'll be done. This job's about, I'd say, 65% done. And uh, it's day two. So like I said, guys, it's taking a lot a lot longer than it should and that's partially because we had to buy you know we had to go buy the shop press um we ran into some issues we broke that bolt so we had to go to ace hardware if you caught my video from yesterday and the garage is a mess so working out of it right now is not ideal but uh we're doing we're making good time it's 9 38 we should be able to have the bmw buttoned up by like 11 30 12 and like i said we got a 2 30 appointment 
maybe I can mow my lawn because it's out of control. So fun, fun Monday, and we still got to hit the gym at some point. So got to got to focus on uh, physical health, mental health, and financial wealth. It's the three goals right now. So we'll keep on moving, and I'll throw you guys back on time lapse. All right guys, so I was able to use this kit. I like using this kit because it really keeps everything aligned. Um, when you're using the H-frame press, it's very easy to put this thing in crooked and damage the uh, new parts. So everything went smooth, used the Milwaukee Impact. You know, it's got 1,500 foot-pounds of torque with the forge battery on it. So this is that new uh, Milwaukee Impact. It's the uh, 2967. It's an absolute beast. I use it on setting too. But as you can see, we got the bearing pressed in and then I was able to use this piece on the back. It fit perfectly right in there. And that's gonna prevent when you're, pull, when you're pushing the uh, hub through, it's gonna prevent the back of the bearing from blowing out because that will happen. And then you're screwed, you gotta get a new bearing and then you gotta press this one out and you're back to square one. Um, it's happened to me before. This shield is a little bent because it's all rotted in the back. You can see it's all rotted and broken. I'm not worried about that. All right, guys, so as you can see, um, I was able to use the kit that we had bought online from Amazon for 60 bucks to uh, press the hub itself back in and uh, it worked perfectly. I used the uh, one end of it, this end, it, it fit perfectly right in the back to support the back of the bearing so that when I press the front of the hub in, it didn't blow out the back of the bearing and I used this one and it just fit perfectly to keep everything aligned. Use the uh, Milwaukee Impact, this is the uh, newer one. It's the 2967, I believe. Uh, it's 1,500 foot-pounds of torque with the forge battery. It's an absolute beast used on setting too. Pulled it right in. But um, so we were able to install the bearing and install the hub with that $60 kit. But to remove it, we needed the H-frame press. So at least we have this press now um, and the hubs together. So now if you guys remember from yesterday's video, I left the lower ball joint on the car just because... Um, I didn't want to split the boot taking it off you know these are these are brand new control arms and ball joints i didn't want to split the boot so what i'll do is i'll grab the knuckle i'll put the two e-torques back into the ball joint i'll get the ball joint set i'll put the nut back on there we'll get the lower control arm in and then um we'll uh we'll get the strut in we'll get this thing back together put the axle back in everything like that it's maybe an hour tops and uh should have this back together and we'll go for a test drive and then uh, it's then we'll clean up the garage um, so that we're able to actually work out of it efficiently. And then we have that 2:30 appointment, so we're making good time. It's 9:50. Uh, should be done by 11:30, give or take. And um, yeah, daily's done. So and this old bearing was was just completely shot. I had a real bad hum in the passenger side floorboard. You could just hear it really bad. It was getting worse, progressively worse by the day. And I'm still driving like 80 miles a day between here and my girlfriend's house, um, usually twice a day, if not four times a day. So let me clean up, let me put away um, this tool because it is a brand new uh, and it's in blow molded case. I, I really, I'm OCD with my stuff, if you guys haven't noticed, like everything has a place, you know. I got a lot of sockets out right now, but I am OCD and the garage being like this is so nerve wracking and it's bothering me so much. Um, and it's really affecting workflow, so. We got to get this garage taken care of by 2.30 when we go to pick up that uh, the other car, the Lincoln Town car for the uh, side job on that for Sean, which is uh, the guy with the transit company from for the airport and everything like that. So let me get this hub. Uh, let me get this stuff cleaned up. You know, let me get the hub over to the car. I'll put you guys on a time lapse and we'll install this thing and we'll see how long it takes to get it back. Get the car back down on the ground and uh, ready to roll and then we'll take it for a test drive and see if that hum went away all right so what i'm going to do to make it easier on myself is if you watched the previous video you know that the bolt snapped 
um, and was seized in where the uh, where the strut goes into. So I'm just gonna clean this up really quick with a uh, this is a drill with these like wire brush attachments. Just make my life easier. Yeah, very dirty. All filled with rust. Just to make my life easier. And then what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna try and spread this a little bit more and uh, I'll clean this up too. Just to help with uh, sliding it back in and we'll grab the WD-40 and uh, just make, make the process as easy as possible. So throw you guys on a time lapse and we'll get this thing back together. All right, so what I just did was I put the two lower control arms in, I got the ball joint uh, one bolted in, and then the other lower control arm in. Those are all tightened up. I left the tie rod disconnected, and then I started working on getting this strut back in. I sprayed it with some WD, I grabbed a jack. I'm jacking right from underneath the control arm just to get it up in there. And while I'm jacking, I was hitting it on the side with the hammer like that and you guys saw on the time lapse it popped it's right where it should be so we're gonna get our new bolts from ace hardware which are right here i'm gonna decide which one i want to use i think i'm gonna go with the uh coarse thread and uh we'll throw a new bolt in there and then we'll get our axle back in we'll make sure that it ain't rubbing on the shield because this shield is tweaked and then we'll get our other dust shield on and then we'll put the rotors on, you know, brakes back together, ABS sensor, and job's basically done. Like I said, this should have been a three-hour job max, but uh, yesterday I turned into an affair trying to get all these tools and, and all this stuff. But I'm happy it happened on my own car and not a customer's, which is exactly why I was waiting to get the garage 100% before I started taking on bigger jobs. So let's get back to work and before I get copyrighted. So who else caught that? I didn't put the axle in. So that's what happens when you're rushing and not paying attention. And I won't cut this out. This is real life stuff, man. You know, I leave it all in. So back to the time lapse. We'll pull this back off and pop the axle in. So that's it with this guy. So we're gonna drop it down on the ground. We'll start it up. We're gonna check the oil because remember we did an oil change and we never uh, started it afterwards and checked the oil. So we'll start it, let it run for a few seconds, shut it off, check the oil, see if any needs to be added. Then we'll take it for a ride, make sure uh, we got no issues and that noise went away. And then this is wrapped up and we'll start cleaning the garage. Uh, we're making good time. It's 10:45 right now. So, uh, like I said, we don't have our appointment until 2.30, so we got plenty of time to really, you know, clean up the garage and get stuff where we want it, pull the side-by-side -side out, and uh, start making some money for the day, start the work week strong.
really hot and muggy out today. We had some rain, so it's disgusting, the humidity. So I apologize for the fan noise always in the videos, but I need it, man. So if anything, it's gonna be a little low. Like I said, this car takes like 6.2, 6.3 quarts. I put six in it, but I have extra oil in the garage. So yeah, we're a little low, we're at the first line. So, especially because this car consumes oil, I want it topped off to the very top every single time. So I grab some other oil, we'll top it off, and then we'll take it for a test drive. So this same oil, it's just STPs, but it's the 5W30 full synthetic. Probably needs about, it needs, it needs like a half a quart. So I like to top it off all the way. Like I said, this car, it doesn't leak oil, but it burns oil. Uh, I drive a lot of highway miles, you know, so it, it consumes oil. And I'd rather keep it topped off because it's my daily driver. Uh, I just got the car for a steal. When I got it, it was in perfect condition. I ended up hitting a cone on the parkway that uh, was in my lane, so it messed up the uh, passenger front a little bit. But the interior, everything, everything really works and the car runs good. AC works, heat works. And I was driving at 120 miles a day, so I can't complain for 1500 bucks, you know. They were asking 4200 I got the guy down to 3500 And then when I went to go look at it, there was a bunch of oil. It had uh, some pretty bad oil leaks. And uh, I had told the guy... Now, I'm not going to lie, it's not like I was doing work, I was trying to purchase the car, so I'm a haggler, I told the guy, you know, it could be the rear main seal leaking, there's oil everywhere, that's going to be a big job, so we negotiated, he didn't need the car anymore, they were moving, he had newer BMWs, the guy was loaded, this was like his, his uh, daughter's car for college years ago, and um, all right. A little bit more, and we're right where I want to be. And uh, I negotiated with him, and he ended up taking 1500 And I'll be honest, the car was worth... When I had bought it, the car was worth 3500 It needed new brakes. It was sitting for so long, the brakes were rusted. They were kind of stuck. But I, ended up, I drove it home from his house uh, 30 minutes with no issues. And uh, another common issue with these... X3s is the coolant reservoir cracks, so they leak. So I literally I put brakes. I did brakes uh, all the way around from Detroit axle, the drilled and slotted, the same ones that are on the truck. So these are um, really nice brakes. Um, they're the same ones on this BMW, and I put these things through hell, and literally they they work great. But I did the brakes. I did the coolant reservoir. Got that off of Amazon, and I recharged the AC, and the AC blows cold as ever. I put the front grill in it, um, LED bulbs, and black badges, and that's really it. But, all right, oil's topped off. We're going to go for a test drive. This car already has a check engine light on, um, an ABS light, a four-wheel drive light. It's got a bunch of lights on the dash for all stupid little stuff. Um, the ABS lights for the rear ABS sensor, so I'll have to check with the scan tool to see if the front passenger is working, because that's the one we just worked on. But as long as that humming noise, uh, that rotational noise from that wheel bearing is gone, and the brakes are all working properly, we have no issues. Um, I'm happy with it, and we'll come back to the house, and then we'll work in the garage. So let's go for this test drive. Let me put my tools away, and I'll take you guys for the ride. So I could already tell you guys that it's 100% better. That was definitely the issue. Right now you would be hearing, a, you know, the constant wheel bearing hum. Like the bearing is bad. And like I said, this car, it's got a check engine light on. Um, and then once you start driving, the ABS light's going to come on. Uh, Four-wheel drive light's going to come on. And... Uh, another like two lights to bmw but they're on because the front drive shaft is out of the the car right now the u-joints went bad and uh i had to order one 
but there's two different styles. There's one for 2005s uh, made before December and 2005s made after December. So they're two different lengths and I bought the wrong one even though it was for an 05. It ended up being, I believe it was 702 millimeters long and I needed the one that was 718 millimeters long. So I already got the, the new one on the way, um, but I could already tell you guys that 100% that wheel bearing was our issue. Um, and I actually, the whole, all of the suspension components, yeah, you see, ABS, brake, and then the four wheel drive light comes on. Um, you know what they say about mechanics, man. We, <laughs> we'll fix other people's cars and make sure we get them 100%, but usually the cars that the mechanic actually drives, uh, there's always a bunch of stuff wrong with it. So, <laughs> it's just how it goes. But I'm taking a quick trip to uh, AutoZone. I'm gonna drop off some used oil and uh, you know get, get this thing up to speed, make sure that it's 100%, and uh, we'll run to Walmart. I'm gonna grab uh, another two lights for the garage um, and then we'll head home and uh, we will start cleaning the garage we'll get the side by side out organize all our tools we'll find a home for the new shop press and we'll get ready for this 2.30 appointment make sure you guys like comment and subscribe I'm going to end it here for this video because this is basically the end of the BMW X3 front wheel bearing three hour job that turned into a day and a half um so it's saying that 97 percent of you guys that are watching my videos are not subscribed if you watch the video and you made it to the end thank you very much but please click that subscribe button like comment and share it really helps the channel grow and it helps motivate me to make more videos i know my videos the quality isn't the best but like i said i'm a one-man team and i'm trying to do the best that i can um and as we progress uh the quality will get better videos will get better and the content will get better so have a good day guys happy monday